Are you tired of manually deploying your Flutter apps to Play Store and Apple App Store? Do you dream of a smoother, more automated process? Well, in this video, we'll be diving deep into the world of Flutter, continuous integration and continuous deployment, also known as CI-CD. We'll break down what CI-CD is, how it can revolutionize your app development process, and then explore a very simple tutorial to implement CI-CD for your Flutter projects. I'm going to teach using my GitHub account, wherein I'll share the link of the project in the description box of this video. By the end of this video, you will be equipped with the knowledge and tools to set up your own CI-CD pipeline, streamlining your Flutter app deployment and saving valuable time. Do you know, we can automatically create APKs in GitHub, specifically using GitHub Actions. Well, what is that? Imagine you have a recipe for a delicious cake. A GitHub account Actions is a workflow like a set of automated instructions that can take care of your cake. Here's a breakdown. Point number one, the recipe book or YAML file. The instructions for the workflow are written in a special format called YAML. This file is typically stored in a .github slash workflows folder within your code repository. Point number two, trigger event. Just like a recipe might say, start when the oven is preheated, a workflow can be triggered by specific events in your GitHub repository. These events can include things like someone pushing a new code or a pull request. Point number three, jobs, also known as steps. A workflow can have one or more steps, which are like the individual steps in your cake recipe. Each job performs a specific task, like compiling your code or deploying your project. The steps don't run on your personal computer. Instead, it runs on a virtual machine called as runner and it's provided by GitHub. It's like having a dedicated kitchen to follow your cake recipe. There are different options available with Ubuntu being a popular choice. Point number four is the output in which we can relish our delicious cake. Once the workflow finishes, running all the jobs and steps, it will produce an outcome. In our case, the output will be our APK file that would be generated for Android apps. By using workflows, you can automate repetitive tasks in your software development, saving you time and ensuring consistency. It's like having a reliable helper in the kitchen who can follow your cake recipe perfectly every time. Let's try seeing it with the help of a practical example, wherein I'm going to follow the points that I've spoke about. But before we dive in, I want to make sure you don't miss out on any Flutter future wisdom. Smash that like button and subscribe to the Programming Hub channel for more Flutter content. Hit the notification bell too, so you will be the first to know when a new video drops. Now, with the help of this example, I'm going to show to you how you can have a very simple Flutter app in which you have this counter. You can try putting this Flutter app into your CI-CD pipeline and automate the build process. Well, what I have done is at the root directory, I created a .github folder inside which there is a workflows folder and inside which there is Android release .yml file. Now, there are a lot of jobs that are going to be executed while the CI-CD is implemented. What do I mean by that? So, look over here. The name of the pipeline is Android release. Now, when it comes to on, it means any specific action like a push or a pull request on the master branch will trigger this workflow. When it comes to workflow dispatch, it will have all these jobs to be running. Now, let me explain to you what is this build in case of our workflow. Do you notice there is something called as this runs on. It tells what compiler or what operating system it should be using. Well, I'm going to detail all these components and all these keywords in the later part of my video. For now, stick to the steps. So what are the steps? 
it tells that I have to latest do a checkout on my code followed by set up a Java environment and then use something called as Flutter actions to create a build on one particular Flutter version. Do you see the amazing thing? What things you could have done on your laptop like setting up the version for a Flutter, like setting up the version for your Java, all those you can automate and keep it within the workspace. Next is going to be the command. For example, Flutter upgrade ensures that my build is going with the latest Flutter upgrade. Next is before I do the APK build, I'm going to do pubget so that the dependencies get downloaded in my workspace and then the APK gets created. Not only that, once the build process is over, I'm going to get the APK in my output folder. And this is going to be the output folder. Let me now do a commit saying that release completed. And now when I do commit and push, you'll notice it's trying to push and over my GitHub, I'll go to my actions tab. You'll notice that my action is already queued and in some time, you're going to see the APK to get generated. Well, that's going to be a few minutes, but it's going to be worthy of your time. That's because you will be having your app releases at least on the testing environment or on the production environment quite frequently. This all steps shall ensure that your build is automated and you don't have to run these commands. You don't have to remember these commands at the back of your mind. And like you notice in my screen, after 2 minutes and 56 seconds, the entire build process gave me an output of an APK, that is this file. I can download this and manually upload on Play Store or in fact upload that procedure also to a deployment process. But for now, I'm going to show to you how the build process has broken down into number of steps. So look over here. Step number one, check out. Step number two, setting up the Java. This exactly is the sequence in which we had set up our YAML file. After doing a checkout, we did a setup for Java. And that's exactly the sequence which was followed until this process for building the APK gave us an output. Even the logs are going to be as good as you creating the APK from a Visual Studio or Android Studio. That beautiful is the entire CI-CD pipeline. Let me explain you some of the keywords that we used. What is runs on? Runs on this keyword tells the GitHub Actions operating system the environment you want your workflow to execute. Then there is Ubuntu latest. It specifies the most recent Ubuntu version available on GitHub. Well, what are the benefits of using this? Number one is convenience. It's simple to use Linux environment for your workflow. Number two is compatibility. Many open source tools and libraries are built and tested on Ubuntu. So using Ubuntu latest increases the chances of compatibility with your projects. What is Setup Java? In GitHub Actions, the Setup Java at the rate V3, it says the specific Java development kit for your workflow. And lastly, Checkout. In GitHub Actions, Checkout refers to an action that downloads the code of your GitHub repository into the workspace where your workflow runs. This is essential because your workflow needs the code to perform building, testing, and deploying your project. In this step, you can choose a different branch to download instead of the default branch. Conclusion Share this video with your friends, family, and anyone else who might benefit from learning about coding and development. Together, we can spread knowledge and empower more minds to join the coding community. Happy coding!